Hello everyone and welcome to this, uh, I guess, part 3 of the Barrel Dollars MTZ 52 or 520 repair. Now you see I'm doing a bit of a different intro. Well, I mean, I'm slacking behind schedules this year, but with old machines you can never rush things. But let's get back to the tractor and I'll show how far I am in this process. Okay, we're back in the tractor now. Well, I did some said that this thing, I replaced all the O-rings, new gasket, uh, also cleaned up the knob with some paint remover. It's actually a pack of light knob, so, you know, it's fine. But I also remember my, you know, hydraulic lift was sagging. Well, ideally you would want to have like this. Well, there's still some free play and slack, but I basically, Removed all the pivots and links and got rid of most of the slack, but the reason why I can't get rid of the uh, All the slack there's a few issues which I'm going to address right now But before I even start the machine and filled up with all I found this on the ground I was thinking huh, that's a new hydraulic seal and then I look at here There's the main line and this actually this is a pressure side and I'm like whoop I guess this fell out and I have to take this apart again because if you start it up it's gonna be a fountain of stuff flying around also if I can get from a BMRC vendor there's a this, this actually should be pipe here instead of this hydraulic line which is badly kinked and I would like to get rid of them but right now he's he has a few tractors that have the right part I'm gonna list down below or What's the picture what I mean? Here's the old pivot points removed and as you can see, well those who looked at the short well were amazed like how worn these are. This, this should be eight millimeter holes. You know, but these all are egged out. I mean, you can reuse them. Basically, you just weld them shut and, you know, drill a new hole. But, you know, I was wondering how do these things get so bad? But the reason is really it's just uh, not wear from lifting the pivots up and down. It's pretty much just vibration and rocking back and forward like a sandpaper. And yeah, they, they were true. I mean, these ones I won't discard, I'm just gonna put them into the parts pile and so if this looks like a mess here, but this the new starting engine and this one had the flywheel dead stuck, I had a lot of problems, usually they are not that stuck, but there's the parts cleaner, there's a, I need it from the other starting engine, I took this backing plate off and yeah, mostly it's just clean your steeding work and there's your this actually is, it's it's painted and and this actually is the pinion gear and you know clutch drive pinion drive for the starting engine and well this is what I found from the old one the old one all the parts are here the starting engine this one's a a savable unit for another thing I'll show why but yeah this teeth are all been grinded up I did turn the flywheel 330 degrees and I couldn't find well on the flywheel I suppose yeah this this thing's pooched this one is fine but we need to clean up the splines because it was binding a little bit so yeah some cleanup work then is this thing here I mean it, it rocks a little bit back and forward but I don't know maybe I'll just leave it alone but this surface was pitted I did clean it up as best as I could new o-ring is already Ordered, so yeah, we should be, you know, for starting this tractor for as long as I need it, it'll be fine. This is not going to be, but the starting engine, yeah. If you look at this keyway, it's completely shared off. This is the second starting engine I've seen where the keyway is gone. The first one was on that great, great crawler, crawler T74, but yeah, as you can see, the seals blown out so that's gonna leak and probably the water jacket somewhere is cracked 
and this is really common that people when they use water the water stays somewhere below here and when it cracks all the water and coolant flows directly into your pinion gear so yeah good days this is the old one i took out this is also parts unit i mean it's repairable but uh yeah i don't know maybe i'll scavenge this part here this this one has a really good surface the other one is pitted but i'll see what i can do and this one we need actually this part here and i'll show you why now if you come here this is the housing for the pinion gear and and clutch drive for the starting engine but if you go in and look at this side this this side is missing and there's a substantial crack now how this crack forms there's two ways either we had it filled up with water and it cracked or usually also it cracks the sides with sides are okay but the other thing is something exploded here or just the bearing exploded or something ran so loose that it just took the lip i don't know if you can see this but yeah there's a crack here so in order to take this housing off we have to split the tractor because there's three mounting bolts inside so you can't get to them anyway right now it's not a major concern i took all the gunk out there was so much gunk in here that like it was like it was just crazy amount of gunk also cleans the sides the hydraulic tank so we see where the leaks are and and also i removed all the crappy fuel lines because they were just they were just about to, to fail anyway so yeah we're going to put some new i don't have the, the, any steel lines here but we have to put rubber lines which i'm not a fan of but you know what they have to do the job so now I'm going to talk about, remember that shared of keyway? Now this one has a good keyway and this has almost no bearing slack. So this one has been repaired before by someone. I don't know, this, this came out of the scrapyard. Uh, no idea about the service life or anything else, but it looks fine. Just needs a bunch of new gaskets. But yeah, the keyway you saw on this starting engine is sheared off. And this actually happens when the flywheel runs loose. And when it runs loose, it doesn't only take the keyway out on the crankshaft of the starting engine, it also takes out the key key and the keyway on the flywheel. And it's, this is actually dangerous because if this thing runs loose, you can actually get hit with the starting engine flywheel. So this one is a major safety concern, especially with the older style uh, flywheels like I have on the red tractor. Those, these actually have to be really tight so if i'm going to put the freshly painted uh flywheel on the starting engine i'm going to put also nylock on these threads usually there's only a fold over lock and a fine thread not here but yeah you want to make sure that this thing is tight this is tapered as well so technically if it's not it technically shouldn't come loose but i've seen now like the second starting engine where they are loose and usually it is because this nut hasn't been tightened properly. So that's the main reason why the keyways go bad. There's, there's, there's no other else explanation. Maybe there is, but like I said, I was, this is the second starting engine which I found. I'm not gonna discard this into scrap. And also, yeah, we have a good part stoner for that housing. All of these will get stored and this one is probably all a parts unit at best, but you know what? Starting engines are not easy to come by anymore, so I'll save it for a rainy day. We can't use the insides probably, but the other small bits and pieces, maybe the maybe that you know cylinder is good. I don't know. We have to take it off and assess the wear. So yeah, pretty much that's that's about it from this side. I mean, it's not really easy to work outside when it's. Uh, already autumn and it's minus one degrees but you know what doesn't matter when you get the job done right oh boy was i not right with the first guess now i decided to take this uh starting engine pinion gear and clutch drive apart and well i will say if you ever have to take this apart uh make sure you have a at least a six ton hydraulic press and you have also a sort of you have to heat the collar because 
that there is a really tight fit and you won't be able to just freaking hammer it out like never so my advice would be just heat the collar and put some pressure on it and it will release itself now the bearing has also a snap ring which basically is a c-clip so yeah that one to dig out is also a pain in the butt so just be aware of these things now i did actually discover that these uh both of these units had their own issues like i'm going to say the bearings were wasted the thrust bearings were broken completely but i managed to salvage from two units one workable unit and i will say um uh, it's you, you don't want to use pitted parts and you don't want to use parts that have like excessive wear so one of these parts one of these pinion clutches had actually uh, a bad shaft but it had a good bushing the other one had a bad bushing on the main the main hub and but the shaft was okay so like i say having like dozens or more than one of these as a spare part stoner is a really good one but like i say this deserves the repair itself deserves a different video of its own now for the parts now here are the parts listed that you need to actually um repair this thing however most of these parts like the shaft uh the pinion gear drive these things are just unobtainiums if you don't have any way to get a part stoner your other best option is just to go to a direct starter because these things yeah they these have been obsolete for the past 25 to 30 years so the availability of the parts for this starting engine pinion new clutches is just non-existent really but if you're curious what i did use then here's the list and now let's move on further in time where i'm actually going to install the thing okay here's a sorry for the glare here's a bit of an installment now i have the starting in a clutch and the pinion repaired this was in november but as i discovered uh we don't have these gaskets anymore in, in stock so i had to make one and the funny thing is also you know i'm, I'm gonna say like when i repaired uh you know the, the starting engine clutch every bearing was wasted like if you're taking it apart um just have new bearings already in store and there's a certain procedure how it's taken apart which i'm not going to show in this video this it's that one deserves a let's say a special video of its own however let us try to put this thing where it belongs oh my gosh so this has to go on first before anything else as you can see we have a workable unit we want a correct orientation so let me put the gasket on there's also an o-ring here which i believe is a oh man don't tell me you're not fitting son of a biscuit oh here we go see you want to cooperate i know you want to I know you want to cooperate man okay bolt throws line up uh why is this one not lining up oh Never mind, we have to probably punch a hole, hole in one, but yeah, correct orientation. Uh, you have to keep in mind, this is your lever, this has to go this way, and so let me see if I can get it started. And the O ring I have is, oh my god, it's too cut in, but whatever. So it goes in. That's going like this. I'm going to engage it. Then you want to do this, and it's just kind of yank it in like this. Okay, you already know it goes. Then let me see if I can orient. Oh my god, this gasket's the worst. That's stuck. Why the heck you're stuck? Oh my god. Oh, there we go. I, I don't know. Mine, I made it you know, perfect, but something else is. Okay. 
man. That o ring is tight. Let me get some persuasion for it. So, some persuasion tools get it done. I mean, it does look crude, but if it gets the job done, that's all I'm concerned of. Oh, yeah. Come on, baby, go in. What's your freaking problem, good sir? Oh, man. Don't tell me we're going to be stuck with this shenanigans for the next hour or so. That'll be a disaster. So the bolt hole doesn't line up. Man, stupid Soviet machinery. <sighs> nope. You ain't going. Well, I'm gonna get this thing seat because this O-ring needs to seat, uh, seat into this housing, but I don't understand why it doesn't want to go there. Hold, hold on, let me see if there's something else going on here. Oh yeah. I think we may need longer bolts. This up. Yeah, it's gonna take forever. See you back when I'm done with it. Alrighty, we have the starting engine pinion clutch assembly installed. Now, tip of advice. Uh, Put the Bendix into the engaged position, otherwise you won't have enough clearance. And how to solve the problem with the persuasion of the O-ring? Uh, put, I don't know, longer bolts or studs, the M10 metric course thread. So you have to use four to guide it and then you have to just, you know, uh, just turn these, turn these bolts and it will just start going inwards. It's a really tight fit, so yeah, that's why we couldn't get it installed the first time. Now, since we have a new assembly here, uh, I'm going to put some oil into it. So that's your that's your drain block, that's your fill block. So all I want to do is, you know, fill it up until it starts coming out. Now this is, you know, lightly used oil. Now why lightly used oil? Because we're going to take in this tractor apart anyway because the clutch needs repair so I'm going to use just something that I can see you know it's it's, it's pretty much it's new oil so I'm going to put it in oh yeah lots of it yeah just wanna see oh Already full? Really? Man, didn't take much. I'm going to put a little bit more. Yeah, doesn't take really much oil. Now, what I want to do the next time is uh, get it everywhere like this. Before I'm going to start the engine. I'm going to let the starting engine just turn over and lubricate every single piece. Yeah, right. We're good here. Now, can we install the starting engine? Yes, we can. We have a gasket and I didn't put any, uh, you know, silicone here because there's no point. We have to take it apart anyway, but what I want to do now let me see if we can install uh, the simple starting engine which is also repaired and I'm gonna tell you a few tips and tricks. Okay. Alrighty man 40 kilos of fun. Oh Jesus Christ. Okay. Stay strong man. Okay, good, good, good. Handy stuck, not bad. Now, can I actually 
put you over so I have the alignment now here. Yeah, there's, there's this dude here as well, which we have to get in now. God. Want the French tools. Why not want to go? Not too problem, good sir. Oh my god. Yes. Now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So we are where we're stuck at. We're stuck at on the gasket. And we're, we're not on the line at all. Oh Jesus. Oh my god, now the gasket's gone. Son of a biscuit! Oh my gosh! Well, gasket should. Man, I mean, if you just put it without the gasket, it would be a lot easier, but you can't put one. Otherwise, the commenters will say, dude, don't freaking do half his jobs. Now, let me see if I have. Oh yeah, we have a problem. I need to install a plug. But the problem is I don't have the plugs. Oh crap. Um well hold on, let me find this. There's supposed to be two plugs. I'm gonna have to scavenge two starting engines and then we can continue with this persuasion procedure. Okay, I found the missing plug to that side. This side I'm going to have to search, but let us install this thing or at least attempt to install. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, it ain't that easy. You have to do it alone, but it's doable. It's doable, but we're hanging on on something again. What the French toast? Really? Oh man, don't tell me that the clock doesn't fit. Jesus Christ. Man, I hate these blocks. Like, really? Why in the French toast doesn't it fit? Now I have to go and look for the other block. This block doesn't fit. Clearance issues. Be back. Alrighty, I got it installed. I had to actually borrow the missing block from the crawler. All the other starting engines I have had none of the blocks left. So the plug is a fine thread. Uh, it's basically has the same thread as a grease fitting. I don't know it's, if it's even a metric thread, but it's a fine thread one. And yeah, uh, got to order some blocks, but I got it done and I'm going to get uh, order some new blocks for all of them including the crawler uh people would you know i put the crease fitting here just as a temporary placeholder now we got it installed one of the towels was you know hanging on to it but it's there and it's secured now next piece is this backing plate for the pony engine starter and if you have an old 500 500 series belarus or old 800 you want to get the one that has multiple holes in it Crawlers, uh, harvesters, and I believe have just only one set of holes, so the start is like this. But in here, there's no clearance, so you want to get the one that has the multiple holes plate. Uh, I believe this has a part number, but I am convinced these ones are out of production for many decades. And before we're going to install the flywheel, this has to come go on first. Then goes the flywheel, the flywheel nut, the key, wood off key. I mean, the key is installed. It's good. And off camera, I'm going to install some of the carburetor. That's I have to figure out because the old carburetor would just overflow the engine constantly. So I want to have a decent one. So I'm I'm gonna see what I can scavenge. But in the meanwhile, we can install these things. And now. As I told you, I'm using a made in Lithuania starting engine repair kit and they don't have this seal and this seal is for your magneto. So it goes here. 
but for some reason the Lithuanians uh, don't include this gasket. I don't know why. I mean, no offense. I mean, they make good gaskets, but uh, this one you may be, if you have a starting engine that has a magneto on it, you may have to make this one yourself. The same as the seal for the pinion gear drive. So, yeah. Fun times, fun times. Uh, I'm gonna assemble more of these things here and we're gonna continue with the starting engine carburetor because that itself is, can become a real pain if it's, you know, not done. This starting engine, all I did was put new seals in it, make sure the end play was correct. Uh, new head gasket, because the old one was pooched. Uh, yeah, just the regular stuff. It's a two stroke. It'll run if the bearings aren't shot. And yeah, I'm gonna get busy now and we'll see in the next clip. Alrighty, we just assembled most of the pieces and uh, yeah, uh, we get a flywheel installed and I looked at the end play, it's good, no slack, nothing. So now I'm going to look at the carburetor and I forgot to mention that your engine or starting engine, engine timing or ignition timing is three millimeters before top dead center. So this is where you want to have your points open up. Uh, I did check the points in Magneto. This, this one's fine. I built, we built this years ago. This one didn't have even the knob to, you know, kill your Magneto if something goes bad. Uh, the engine was lightly stuck. I don't know what was stuck. Uh, I, I tried bending it over with the starting engine and it felt like there was ice somewhere. Could be, could be in the flywheel compartment. I don't know. I mean, it turns over fine. It's it's not, it wasn't you know, stuck from the cylinders. It was stuck somewhere there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to finish up. And also I hit my thumb and oh, that was not, let me say, if you hit your thumb with the hammer, it ain't fun. It's kind of like annoying. Anyway, let's continue this saga and see if we can... Actually, you know what? We don't need a starter. We can actually rope start, start this thing. Yay. Alrighty, enough yapping. I'm going to start finishing the other pieces. Well, here we are back. We're now inside and dealing with the carburetors of the starting engine. Now, for those you live in Australia, you call these carbies. I know, I know, I'm kind of familiar with them because there's lots of great content creators from Australia. Names shall not be named now, but anyway, uh, this one is a working unit. However, what happens with these over time is you either flange, this, this surface bends. Now this, if you look at this one closely, this one's bent. This somebody, I don't see anyone really grinding it, but you don't want to grind it too short because or, or too thin because your flying just have no meat to hold on. So the other typical problem that happens with these is this modern gasoline isn't great for the membranes. They have one single membrane here. I actually added some, uh, what is it called? It's basically a plastic that's used on greenhouses. It's, it's a soft plastic. So I put that in there to kind of elongate the membrane life. That's, that's actually it works. Maybe in some other part of the world, you don't have to do this. So, but this one has another problem as well. The second problem besides the membrane is, membrane is the needle valve inside isn't holding up. So that basically if you open the starting engine gasoline tank valve, you have basically pouring gasoline out from every orifice. So, I'm going to take this membrane apart and this one has probably a better needle valve. So I'm going to check out what's inside here and I'm going to show you how you can actually bypass all these problems. So be right back. Okay, we're back. I've dismantled the carburetor now. This is a core of a, of a Belarus uh, 800 series starting engine now. There are a bit of issues. First of all, I need to grind the flange. The flange is a bit warped. 
Uh, everything else is good. Also, this uh, choke, basically this, this choke thingy is is bent. We need to correct that. But everything else seems fine. Also, there's some debris here. The membrane looks especially good. Uh, not going to use the banjo fitting. It has some crud in it. I'm going to keep it, but not using it on this side. And we're not using the air cleaner because the 500 series doesn't have clearance for any. They basically came without any air cleaner on the starting engine carburetor. So I'm going to use this stuff. I use this stuff to clean carburetors and very, you know, gunked up things. So the other one, here's a problem. You see how thin this flange is? And compare this to our donor. We put these two by side by side. You can see somebody has grounded out the flanges. Now, typically this happens when things start bending. And also I can see that this thing's also warped. So this one's no bueno. This carburetor is probably from a stationary engine. And one, two clues are is, is this. Uh, this lever here and the fact that the choke doesn't have any air valve in it. This tells me this is from a stationary two-stroke engine. Maybe a pump that the fire department used. I, I know there's like similar engines start that look like the Belero starting engine, but they're just two-stroke and they have two cylinders and their carburetors are different. I don't know what this could be. I mean... Maybe it's a tractor one. I I don't know. I've never seen this design anywhere else. But the main thing that was interesting to me was the needle valve, which sits down here. Now the needle valve looks like this, but there's actually at the, this end there's a little small rubber grommet. Now this one also has partially it's there, but. I'm going to look if I can find one to replace the old one. So the current plan is basically clean, at least use one of these carburetors. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use, but I'm going to start reassessing the parts and we'll see which one we're going to actually use. Okay, did the carburetor, but we have a problem. See this? This flange here is longer on the 800 series than the 500 series. I can't put the banjo on it. The only way I could fit it is an elbow fitting, but uh, I don't have any elbows that are, you know, that would actually clear that distance. So the other, the other best option I have is a Chinese knockoff carburetor like that. And, well, I guess we have to go with that one, because that one clears, but this one doesn't. Man, what a disaster. Now I found out the starting engine gas tank is full of crud, so we have to actually clean all the systems before we can actually start the starting engine. And I have to also make sure that I didn't mess up the timing. I remember I did it correct, but you know what? Sometimes... Things like that can happen. So I'm gonna see, maybe I have another carburetor, but yeah, that one over there is just now something which we can use, but not on the starting engine, unfortunately. Well, I'm gonna go and uh, dig more in the parts stash and see what else we can find. So here's another example of why I fought with the carburetor that much. Uh, I went with the left one that is the, the kind of green or ochreish uh, kind of color carburetor because that one fit but I was kind of researching why did not the right one fit because actually they should be all interchangeable from the 800 to the crawlers to the uh, harvesters and to the 800 500 series pillars tractors that have a starting engine However, with this one, I discovered that my uh, problem isn't the carburetor, but it's actually number four injector line that is either incorrect or maybe the starting engine variant has a different one, which is probable. But I, I couldn't. I, I'm not going to bend the line, and this is the like the third line that I have, and it's still 
isn't the correct one. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's for a different application. Maybe it's for a self-propelling hay machine. I don't know. But anyway, I want to clear this out so that people would not get the wrong impression. But yeah, that's kind of the problem with this machine. Always clearance issues. Now with this exhaust pipe for the starting engine, I went with the exhaust pipe that I knew was good and fine. But when you look at the pictures, you'll see the pipe is kind of cocked into one side. It should be straight. So the reason why it looks like this is somebody in the past welded the flange wrong. And now it's kind of sticking into one side. It should be straight. It should go straight under the air cleaner. And we can't have this one because it's running, you know, it's kind of a hot exhaust and it's go running just exactly on top of the fuel line. So you don't want to have anything like that. So, yeah, uh, we had to go back to the old rusty one. Thank God I didn't throw it away. But anyway, we're now continuing with the other part that I was filming sometime in the past. Alrighty, we're back. Remember I had the issue with the hydraulic lines? Now, when you look at the picture, this is your pressure side line and it would not line up. So I took the other line, which is also a pressure line inside the hydraulic unit. And look what I discovered. I discovered that these have to be like the really old, early 60s style tubes. These are the uh, right side tubes and I'm going to get replace them as well because they're all kinked, they're all bad. They've been, you know, braced in the past. Also, like somebody had had clearance issues before because there's a ton of copper washers. We're going to have to replace those as well. And finally, I have to go to the local salvage chart and find the right 500 ones. Now, the 800 series has a similar tube, but that line or tube or whatever we wish to call it is shorter than on the 500 series so we do need the 500 one anyway and since i was there i also put some alignment dowels onto the rear bolster and secured all the bolts now never mind this fabric gobble here this hasn't been done by me by someone else and it's it's cracked as well from several sides so this there's a typical problem with these 500 series, but I'm going to address this issue later once we're going to find a better replacement. But right now, this will do. But with these lines, uh, I'm going to go the route and get the right ones from a parts tractor. And for me, they're fairly inexpensive. They're not that expensive at all. But yeah, I guess... Uh, the hydraulic system rebuild just continues. It's like a gift that keeps on giving. Now here's another interesting issue. I battled with these uh, hydraulic, not only the hoses, but also with these hydraulic lines. And all the lines I had were just badly kinked, damaged. They're the older style lines. They're a million banjo fittings. And one thing I will say, recommend to do is if you get like lines like these, Always, you know, flat file the banjo fittings because otherwise they will just leak. They're, they're usually old, they're bent, uh, not true anymore. The surfaces aren't, aren't true, I mean by that. And also I decided to go for the newer style hydraulic uh, pressure line from the hydraulic pump because pretty much that eliminates a lot of really bad leak points. The only thing I did was put a new O-ring in there and some new hardware and we're good to go but i will say there is actually a right and wrong way of doing this you definitely want to get certain pressure lines in first and then do the sidelines and maybe leave the last pressure line that you know goes from the hydraulic spool valves into the i don't know what's it called but you know what what it where what place it goes and then you should have no clearance issues by fitting your wrenches and all the other equipment. So just keep that in mind if you're taking it apart. For me, this was probably the most tedious and time-consuming work of all, just fixing all the leaks. 
Now, off screen, I did repair the hydraulic cylinder as well. There wasn't nothing really bad with it. Just, just let, let me say the O-rings were just non-functional anymore. But anyway, let's continue with the next piece of video. Alrighty, I think I have everything ready so I can do the first cold start of this engine since uh, May of 2023. Uh, so, uh, let's see what's going to happen. Uh, I think uh, I'm going to see if the engine turns over and uh, that there's no substantial leaks. And then I'm going to put some fuel into the tank because the fuel tank's kind of empty. And also figure out where I lost the cap for the uh, starting engine fuel tank. So yeah, let's see what's going to happen. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, no choke. Panic is engaged. We're in neutral. Fucking see what's going to happen. Nothing? Really? Nope. Really? What's your problem, good sir? Put this. Somewhat success, but still. Starving on fuel again. What the crap, man? I don't understand. There's plenty of fuel, but for some reason. It just doesn't want to reach the freaking carburetor. Oh man! No, it doesn't reach. fuel starvation issues again stupid filter i'm going to get rid of that filter it's it doesn't do absolutely anything hold on okay hopefully it's now better where's my freaking headphones hopefully this thing has now better clearance issues i mean it's not the fuel tank, but it's not seated correctly. Why are you leaking? I'm not supposed to leak. Come on, man. There. Now, let's see if we can get this engine running in style. Okay. Okay, I'm now going to add the diesel fuel and what we did was to make sure that everything turns and because this thing has pre-combustion chambers like the D2 caterpillars, this is a D50 engine, same principle, uh, I have to build some heat but you see it wanted to go, it wanted. Okay, let me do some little refurbishments and we're going to make this thing run. Okay, I've set the fuel. We're putting it on almost full throttle. 
Let's see what's gonna happen. Three times is the charm, like they say. Alrighty. Hopefully, all goes well. issue here well i decided to take the hydraulic filter out because i was not sure what i would get or if it's even there now i did find that this one is there's a this is not the correct one at all 
Now, someone has put a rusty sleeve in it, and I don't know what the heck's going on here, but I decided just to take it apart and wash it clean, because I've pretty much cleaned hydraulic fluid now, and uh, I don't want any gunk or anything just pretty much, you know, clogging the filter, so I decided to just take it apart and see where to go from there. Okay, as you saw from the picture, uh, the old oil filter or the hydraulic oil filter was plugged up and this is what your brass discs look like. It's basically, it's a steel on brass screen and this happens, I try to clean these with almost everything at my disposal. Uh, acetone, brake cleaner, gasoline, you name it, but you can see these are completely collapsed and this happens when your hydraulic filter on is blocked or is hasn't seen an oil change in decades like these press discs are the same from the crawlers to the uh 200 series belarus to 400 series 800 series has a paper filter but these old ones have these press ones and these press screens they're about one dollar fifty so you need exactly 18 of them and yeah it can kind of be like a 30 dollars plus uh for a new set i have here a good used set i cleaned them up i uh, made sure uh all you want to do basically you can wash them with gasoline or whatever you know brake cleaner it's your your own preference but if your discs look like this they're collapsed uh they're no bueno like these th things will not filter anything anymore and I wouldn't suggest running the hydraulic tank without the filter because uh, you also risk uh, certain contamination. I also found from my parts stash a, a new housing and I'm going to use this one and also the spring on the top was missing. So uh, I think we are good. Oh yeah, this disc we need as well. And the filled seal, which we can also reuse because well, we should make a new one, but they. But I'm going to have to take the hydraulic tank off anyway at some point. So uh, right now I'm going to assemble it and we'll see if we have any hydraulic leaks. I'm going to show you what I did. Uh, I did put all new lines. These are the original 500 series hydraulic lines. We have a rebuilt cylinder that was kind of a interesting job and we have new hoses and new couplings uh, some of these you can actually bolt on directly but i'm using the couplers because i got the shorter hoses but you can pretty much bypass all this and just directly hook them into the fittings but anyway we're going to see if any of these lines leak hopefully not at least i have now oil in the tank and i don't see any leaks before that we had just major leak issues everywhere alrighty I'm going to assemble the filter and we'll go on from there okay I kind of made it into another spot with the tractor uh, I'm going to say I had to tighten some of these banjo fittings because they showed signs of leakage there's a small pinhole in the radiator but no more oil radiator leaks like the oil radiator is dry yeah I like that very small leakage from this gasket but like I said this housing is going to get uh, replaced anyway and the hydraulic system works just fine uh, steering works also fine front wheel assist doesn't work because I haven't done with the carrier or anything but we'll get there and uh, the only oil leak I had it was from this banjo fitting but everything else smooth doesn't leak um, yeah even those new fittings they don't leak so I would say, I, I call it success. But the only issue I have here is something's not right with this pin. Like the pin is okay, but for some reason it's just half stuck. And I think this, what they call this, this is the arm. I think this arm is bent or something's amiss here. So I'm going to see if I can find a pin that is a bit smaller size or just hog out the hole that's the only reason and last but not least we have this issue here 
which I may have to address because look at the keyway. Yeah, I mean, it's not supposed to look like this. And oh my God, I don't know. I, the part of me wants to do this axle, you know, put the new axle in, new bearings, but the other part would say, just wait. But that's for another episode, another, you know, I'm currently going to break in the tractor. So here's what I'm going to do. So in hindsight, we actually, I fixed a lot of these annoying issues. And uh, yeah, all we have to left to do is one major job, which is the rear axle seals and housing and the axle itself, which you saw is kind of wasted. And that happens a lot also to Farmers and I think also to Minneapolis Marines when they run loose with the you know the clamp and it just wastes the keyway. That's that's it. It's no real way to repair this unless I don't know, you want to do a hack job, that's fine. Not I'm not here to stop you. But uh, that's going to be a major job. What I'm going to do now is just some minor things here and there, but definitely this was one tedious work getting all these leaks fixed and I will say there is a right way and a wrong way of doing this and I probably was in the middle of this boat so uh, I don't know definitely have to do something with the carrier and uh, if you ever wanted to install those hydraulic lines I'm going to say uh, put one put, put the pressure lines in first and then start uh, putting in the you know sidelines but just remember uh there's a certain certain things that you have to do and but i can do that in another video but for this video i would say uh we're done with it maybe i don't know what i'm going to call this video but in the next one i'm going to break in the machine and i'm going to try to film from the cab uh if, if possible i do a setup so i can you know show you how it's like how, how it views from the cabin so anyway, uh, thanks everyone for coming and leave a like and comment if you like the shenanigans. I'm, I'm all here to entertain you all. So anyway, uh, see you all soon in the next video.